So today I'm gonna show you how you can turn this into this. And how you can turn this like what the hell into this. Well, well, well. Welcome. So, it's a sound design technique that I've been using recently pretty often because it gives so much, such cool results. This is what I like to call a sub bass distortion, which I already talked about, but it wasn't, it was like just like a sound design concept, but this one is gonna be like a concept plus like very cool uses that I discovered. So the main idea is to take a sound that has a sub bass, layer it with another sound, and on the whole group, just put a saturator and saturate the hell out of it. So I'm gonna create a MIDI track and another MIDI track so I can show you what exactly that means. I'm gonna open a sine wave in Serum. I'm gonna write some E notes, like sub bass notes, and I'm gonna open Serum on another channel. And here I'm just gonna leave it as is. And I'm gonna group the whole thing. Are you tired of using weak samples? Well, not anymore. Visit oversample.us for super high quality content like Cyberpack 2077. <laughs> Galaxy Sample Pack Super Heavy Mixing Sauce The Mixing Sauce for Ableton Seven effect racks that will clean the mud, make your instruments sound amazing and spacious And many more Link in the description. I'm gonna look for saturator. I'm gonna put saturator on the whole group. Distort the hell out of it. 36 decibels of drive and like use like a hard curve because it, we are looking for like super hardcore distortion. And now when we play, when we play whatever actually, when we play these two sounds layered together, we get like a screech, right? So this is, this is only the sub bass playing. No, it's being distorted, of course, by the distortion. Right? Uh, if we play sub bass and the saw wave at the same time without the distortion, this is a saw wave, this is a sub bass, and we play them together without anything. Sounds like a sub bass and the saw wave. But if we add distortion and we start distorting it, we get some screechy basses, and that's cool. Now we are getting into the territory of like layering different sounds, because basically we're gonna keep the sub bass underneath because we need this is the sub bass distortion. We can automate the volume of the sub bass, which does really cool things, adds some really cool rhythm, and uh, we can uh, use different sounds on top. So I'm just gonna like, I don't know, just write some melody maybe. For example, as you can see, this has a certain rhythm and it's like the notes have a certain length. So we can either I just like duplicate that, but like keep the rhythm of the lead the same. So this is what we get. So what we can do now is we can apply like a LFO automation on the level of the oscillator. We get some movement, right? So if you layer that with the main thing, Maybe without these, actually. Right? We could like... Duh, 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 duh. Right? Maybe I'm just gonna extend that. Right? So we get that movement, like the LFO, like... Dun, 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 because uh, the LFO is being applied to the volume of those layers. So like the main sub bass is actually going up and down in volume. That's why it's creating these wubs. Now we can go into Serum and like maybe choose some different sounds. Okay, so like we can add, like do like a super saw. Pretty cool. We can add reverb because like the distortion does really cool thing when like it distorts reverb. 
So like in these spaces, there's gonna be like cool stuff happening. All right, create some like fills. Same thing with chorus. Chorus is just crazy because it's constant like detuning of the sound. When you distort a sound that has a low pass on it, it creates high frequencies. And it just sounds kind of cool, you know, like very hot. So what I like to do is to just go to some preset pack and just like pick sounds. That's cool. It's cool. So like different presets, just like shifting through them. Oh, that's cool. So uh, we can change the type of the saturation, right? Like wave shaper is gonna give you a lot of options because you can literally just shape the wave uh, distortion. Also, like some wave shapers might be cool because creating different distortion types may actually give you some cool results. So like using Serum FX, Serum has a X shaper which allows you to just like edit a shape of a distortion. Okay, there's something in, that's kind of cool. Let's now try adding some different stuff and then we're, I'm just gonna jump into the example like how exactly this, this has this been made. So like adding some drum fill is, is just gonna make the rhythm of the sin. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna jump right here, show what's going on here. Basically, we have two layers, the sub bass and the synth. So in this case, we have just the sub bass with LFO on it, like that's it. And it is being layered with this one. So this synth is like a super soft, pretty simple. It is having a pitch automation. That's why it goes like down at the end. And, and that's why it pitches here, for example. Right, on its own, it doesn't sound too good. I'm gonna disable saturation. Pretty simple, right? And like, if we saturate that, it still sounds like, just like normal. But if we play that with sub bass. So another sound is this one. Basically, it's just like, uh, let me, let me actually play this sound. It's just like some bass, but I pitched this down, it hits semitones. If you saturate that, we get some cool stuff. So what I want you to notice is that even if this sound is like almost muted at the beginning, it has some sound playing because the saturation is boosting the sound so hard and like squashing it and compressing. Because of that, every single sound that has like high dynamic range is gonna be squashed. Quiet sounds are gonna get super loud. Right, this, this, and then this one. It's interesting some, like, how sounds are like, layered together and the start are just sounding uh, totally different. So the second part... So this sound is, let me play it back without the saturation. This is a part of the riser. Sounds like it's being reversed. So it has a saturation on it, and when we layer that with the sub bass. Damn son. Oh, and this thing is super cool. Damn. So like when I did this, it like it just blew my mind because it's just, just a drum fill and a brass sound and like some, for some goddamn reason they together create this super beefy insane bass. This is the fill, by the way. I I stretched it on the rip pitch mode. That means it got uh, lower in pitch. 
brass then. This toilet is already much more beefier. With the <laughs> with the dumb feel. Like like what? So this thing is just like the same uh, saw wave, but it has like some cool pitch automations. I was just really messing around with it and looking for some cool variations that kick ass. I'm gonna open another project uh, to show you that actually like you can do some melodic stuff too with it. That kind of sounds pretty good. You can do some really cool variations with the distortion. So I'm gonna show you, here's a pretty cool example. And then the bass comes in. So, um, if we distort that, we get this. Uh, and then the bass. Right? By the way, there's an LFO going on. That's why there's that, like, round round rhythm. So, what we are having right now is, like, eight bars of... Four bars of just a melody playing. Clean melody. Let's say, like, imagine there's an 808 underneath that. <laughs> Maybe I'm just gonna make an 808 so you actually don't have to imagine anything. This is what I'm talking about. Like in the second part, there's this bass coming in and because it's layering and doing the whole distortion, sub-distortion thing, it creates that screechy sound, which may be pretty good for a variation. If you don't want the sub-bass to play, or if you just want like uh, that screechy sound, we can add the low cut. And you get this. Right? Without. With. You get that little bit of the like, like the screechy thing. Right, so I guess that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. Let me know what you think about this technique. A couple of announcements. I just released a lo-fi sample pack if you're into lo-fi vibes or if you're just like into like high quality samples. I think you can use these sounds and other genres without any problems. Also, I've been getting so many requests to release some tracks and finally, I did. So you can check out the link in the description and go to my SoundCloud. I also published a free sample pack along with this. So what I'm gonna be doing, and I'm gonna announce that in a separate video also. With every track that I release on SoundCloud, there's gonna be a free sample pack coming. Posting a new track is gonna mean that the previous sample pack is gonna get overwritten by the new one. So basically it's just gonna disappear. So if you want some unique sounds, you gotta like hurry up. Have a nice day and see you in the next one. So that's it. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, you can side on that subscribe button. Also, you can visit my site oversample.us for some high quality samples, presets and free sounds.